Hi guys, my name is Jordan. I'm a freelance filmmaker and video editor. I use Premiere Pro. I mess up a lot. So here I'm doing the fourth installment of five things I wish I knew starting out in Premiere Pro. Here we go. Number one, undo, redo. Like I said, when I edit, I screw up like a lot. Anything from just moving the wrong clip to extending the wrong audio to deleting the entire freaking timeline. What I used to do is try to manually go back and move things to the way that they were or go back in my source monitor and drag the same clips back that I deleted, but there's a much easier way. Just use the undo button. Go to edit, then undo to magically fix your mistake. But what works even faster than that is using the shortcut key for it, which is control Z. And if you wanna redo the thing that you just undid, that's control shift Z. But what works even, even, even faster than that is if you have a keyboard or mouse with programmable macro keys. For me, it's this Razer mouse and these two little buttons here that I mapped to do undo and redo. So now literally anytime I screw up, which is a lot, fixing it takes literally a split second. Number two, the rolling edit tool. This one isn't crazy, but it feels so good to save that extra half second every single time that you do it. When you wanna keep two clips in sequence and just make one longer and the other shorter, what I would normally do is take one clip and move it back and then extend the other clip to match. But you can actually do this in just one motion. Select the rolling edit tool from either your toolbar or using the shortcut key N and then hover over the cut between your two clips. Now just click and drag to choose a new breaking point. Number three, fake aspect ratio. You know how in like high budget movies, there's those black bars above and below the picture? You could spend tens of thousands of dollars to get an anamorphic lens or change your sequence manually to have a thinner aspect ratio. But what I find to be easiest, cheapest, and totally non-committal is to just pop some black bars at the very top of your timeline. I'm using some that I just downloaded for free and I'll link down below to a few sites where you can get them from. But if you wanna have total ownership of all your materials and make your own custom ones, I have a tutorial for that right here. This is an incredibly easy drag and drop solution. If you wanna do this, then plan ahead and shoot your clips a little bit wider than normal. Once you're using these, you can actually move your clip up and down for what feels best because the black bars will hide that change that you're making. It won't win you any Oscars or even make your footage any better, but it totally works as a cheap trick to getting one step closer to that elusive film look. Number four, snapping on and off. Plain and simple, it can be really frustrating to wanna to move your clips just a little bit, like maybe one frame, and to have your clip want to immediately jump to line up with another spot on your timeline. This is called snapping, and sometimes it can be the most wonderful thing in the world, and at other times it can be the most annoying thing in the whole freaking world. I honestly couldn't figure this one out for the longest time, and it's also the reason that I've come this close a bunch of times to destroying my monitor with my keyboard and setting it on fire. The solution to turn it on and off is really simple. Either go to sequence and then snap, or just use the shortcut key S. You can quickly see if it's on or off by either looking at the magnetic symbol here at the top left of your timeline, or by moving your clip near another and seeing if there's the presence or absence of a snap with these little triangles. And finally, number five, add track layers. Have you ever had a bunch of clips that you just wanted to stack on top of each other and you wanted more room in your timeline to do that? Me too. By default, you normally start out with just three track layers for both audio and video but you can add more really easily. You can do this by either right clicking on the left hand side where all your tracks are labeled and then going to add track to add one more audio and video track each. Or you can do that same thing but just choose add tracks if you wanna make a whole bunch at once. You can also accomplish this by literally just dragging a clip into the space above the track layer and it'll immediately make a new one with your clip in that position. And that's it, guys, those are five more things I really wish I knew starting out in Premiere Pro. Some of them I learned how to do a while ago, some of them I learned how to do a lot more recently, but either way, I hope that you can benefit from my trial and error and trying to figure things out along the way. If you guys found this video helpful, either consider giving it a like, or if you really, really want to, uh, consider subscribing so that you can know when I make my next video. If you didn't like it, if you just hated it, let me know. Give me a comment, tell me what I could do differently. Ultimately, these videos are for you guys. How I learned how to do Premiere was by using the internet, Google and YouTube. So if these videos can be of any help, that's literally the best case scenario for me. But thanks so much for stopping by, and I hope to see you next time.